Hey guys, so today I want to share with you my favorite curriculum. My sister and I were talking about it last night. She kept calling me, texting me, asking me, like, what curriculum is it that you recommended? The free one again. And I have made a video on this curriculum before, um, but I just haven't in a couple of years. So I figured I should make another video because this curriculum is so good. I discovered it wow, now it's like quite a few years ago when I was teaching and I couldn't believe it was free. Like I was looking through it and the principal or whoever was there was like, yeah, and the best thing about this curriculum is it's free. And that made me go, wow, this is a really great curriculum. So let's just jump right into it. I'm going to show you, we're going to do a little walkthrough and then I'll show you how to use it because I realize it can be a little bit confusing if you're not used to looking at like big, hefty teacher's guides. So this curriculum goes from kindergarten all the way through eighth grade. It includes all subjects, reading slash language art. So reading and writing science. It had, they have computer science now that's new this year. So you should definitely add yourself to their like subscription, you know, their email list, because that's how I found out they now have computer science. So that kind of gave me a little woosa in the back of my mind. Now I have something that I can use for computer science as well. That's free. They have history. Did I miss anything? Whatever. They have all the subjects. They don't have like art, um, physical education, but they have all the academics, uh, all the academic subjects. So let's look into it. Yes, I am talking about core knowledge and the app 400 is uh, reading.com. I'm going to put that right here. Okay, so here it is. And by the way, all the links, all the links can be found at buymeacoffee.com slash Akiba. This is what I'm using now to share these links. Look at this. Isn't this really cool? So your, your followers, your community can support you by buying you a coffee. The only thing I don't like about it is that you have to buy like the $5 coffee. You can't do like $1 or $2. But anyway, I would really appreciate it, you guys. So Coming back, yes, this is core knowledge. Let's do a quick walkthrough. So what you're going to do, go to their website. Um, click download free curriculum. Now, let me make sure that you guys can actually see me down here too. Okay, yeah. Click download free curriculum. And also I'm going to show you towards the end how to get their guide that has like all of the objectives that you need to, like if you need to provide objectives to your state or your county, whatever. Um, okay, so then you're going to scroll down. And as you can see here, all the grades. Oh, I was wrong. It's not just kindergarten through eighth grade. I forgot it's pre-K through eighth grade. And the pre-K is so adorable and so cute. One thing that I really do love about this curriculum too is that you can mix and match. So as homeschoolers, we're not all the time like, okay, my child is in third grade. We're doing third grade stuff. Sometimes our kids have been in school or not been in school. And we've realized that, okay, they didn't get the content from first grade. So you can do the first grade content. Last year with my daughters, I was doing the third grade content, even though they're in first and second grade, because I felt like they could handle that. So let's just look at third grade because I feel like it's a good in between. Um, so third grade, if you don't click any of this stuff over here, then it's everything is going to come up in order. So first you'll see the language arts and then history, geography, et cetera. So the third grade skills, language art skills, those are like mechanics and also things like in the younger grades, phonics. Um, and the program here is a pretty good as well, but I'm just not going to talk about their learning to read programs, but they do have that here for free if you're looking for a phonics-based reading program as well. But I really want to focus on the not learning to read stuff, um, more of the comprehension because I don't talk about that enough, I feel like. Um, so here's what you do. So here it's broken down into domains, right? And so each domain, if I click on domain one, which we did last year, the wind in the willows, you'll see that there are 13 lessons in this language arts domain. Each lesson, it says take 70 minutes. It's divided into shorter segments. But again, you're at home. It's not going to take you that long. The second part of the lesson called the extension 
most homeschooled children or most p children whose parents are actively involved in their education won't need that part because they're asking, they're just talking about things that most children will know if you speak with your children, if they're homeschooled, if you're just in general involved with their education, like they may be teaching them some extra vocabulary words. Okay. So you go down here, you'll see these individual resources. You used to have to enter your email. Now you don't have to. Interesting. So anyway, you'll see three books for kindergarten, first and second and third. I believe you'll see three books. Um, so the first is the teacher's guide. The second is the flip book. And the third is the image cards. And I'll show you exactly how you use each one of those. Let me download them. And so this will be, this is for the reading. Let's see. Oh, which one is it? The anthology? Yes. So the teacher's guide. Uh-oh, you're not going to be able to see the teacher's guide unless I change my, hold on, my window. Ooh, okay, let me just change my window so you guys can see the teacher's guide. Here we are. Let's take a look at the teacher's guide and the student materials. Okay, so this is the teacher's guide, and you see it says read aloud anthology. So for up to grade three, the students are not reading in language arts. We're focusing on listening and learning. And if you're a teacher, you know, um, or if you've just been looking through the standards, you know that's the focus in those grades, listening to reading and being able to interpret or work with what they've read. Now, starting in the fourth grade, they will have a little student reader where, or a book where they're actually reading themselves. Now, don't think, I know you're going to say, oh, well, when are they actually going to read? Don't worry, because if you use the curriculum as a set, like if you also use their science or history, social studies, they have student readers that are grade level appropriate. So they're, the curriculum as a whole, the kids are actually doing reading. Okay, so let me just scroll quickly past all the fluff in the teacher's guide. So you'll see here, these are the 13 lessons. Um, there's an introduction and then there's an assessment. So I personally, like, I don't use the assessments, you know, I, I do use the, for example, they're doing a lot of writing in this. And so there's like a culminating writing activity that they do. Of course I use that, but I don't use like, Hey, what is this particular vocabulary word? So anyway, let's keep going. So you can pick and choose what you want to use. You'll also see that there is an alignment chart. And so if you need to tell somebody like, hey, what are they learning? They'll tell you right here which lessons like, okay, they're going to be working on asking and answering questions, which is part of the literature standard for grade three. And it is, you guys, this is why Common Core is, is, actually, is good because I feel like it's a good thing that Everyone in our country is working on the same standards. Like, why would there be different standards for different states? You know, it makes it hard for us to, like, let's say we're all third grade teachers. We know in the third grades, kids are supposed to be recounting stories, including fables, folktales, etc. So anyway, that's, this is what that part is. Just skip, 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 skip. I even skipped this part, but that's because I've used it before, before. Basically, all they're saying here is if you use this curriculum uh, as a whole, starting from like pre-K all the way up, everything builds on itself. So we are doing the wind in the willows now. And there's other things in the third grade curriculum that matches up with this, like the class of, oh, okay, the classification of animals comes next, um, but there's stuff in science that matches up. And also this isn't the first time if you've used curriculum that your child has come across a classic tale. Um, when we used it in first grade, the kids were doing, I think first grade was tall tales, right? And so there are going to be parts in this curriculum where they say, hey, remember when we talked about tall tales? Well, if you just started doing this and you had not spoken about folk tales or fables or tall tales, they may not know, but just know that's where that stuff is coming from. And so it might be a good idea for you to say, oh, we didn't talk about, you know, the differences in between a tall tale 
and a fable and a classic tale. Maybe I do want to go back to the first grade curriculum and let's go over that. And frankly, it was really fun. I love doing this part. I don't know about you guys, but I love teaching language arts because you read so many stories and I learn a lot. Like I did not, I had not read The Wind in the Willows before and I did not even know that it was like a big classic tale that everybody should read. It's really fun. Okay, so anyway, let me go back over here. Skip. Again, this is the introduction where they're just telling you like, spend no more than 15 days on this domain. That's my goal this year is to really focus on not pulling, like not like skipping so many lessons. So it takes us two months to do something that should have taken like two weeks. Um, but again, you're at home, do whatever you want. The kids really do love this though. So they might bug you to make sure that you're doing the lessons. Again, here's the pacing guide. And it says like, let's say day one, you're going to spend 50 minutes on part 1A, 20 on 1B. Look through the extensions. You can decide for yourself if you want to skip it or not. Um, and this did not take 50 minutes, but it did take like 35, 40 minutes because we're discussing the book a lot. Um, yeah. Okay. Let me show you how it works. Okay. Skipping. They're talking about why the wind in the willows is so important. And if you're interested in education, like you should read this. It's actually really good. It talks about context clues. It talks about um, how the, um, the author was born in Scotland, but grew up and lived in England's countryside, which inspires the setting for the wind in the willows. And so that's why my lessons would take longer because I would explain all of this to my children. And I found that it just made them deeper thinkers to know, okay, here's the background about the author. Now we can talk about, well, why would this author write this? Like, why wouldn't the setting be somewhere in the United States? Oh, well, this is what he knows. And then that translates over to their writing. Like, okay, don't write about, you know, the English countryside because you don't know anything about the English countryside. It's better to write when you're young, when you're first getting started with your ideas, write about what's close to you, what you know, because you can give a lot of great details about that. Okay, let's continue on, blah, blah, blah. They tell you again, like, here are the things your child, like, learned in the kindergarten core knowledge. Here's what they learned in the first grade. Um, and now here's what we're going to be learning, right, in the third. Okay. So, again, if you find, like, oh, my kid doesn't know that, just go back a couple grades. It's, it's totally fine. And it goes by very quickly. Um, they hear all the vocabulary words that they learn. Through, by reading this. And that's why I say this curriculum, even though it's free, it's so rich. Like I would not have thought to teach my child what the word meandered means, right? Contemplated. And sometimes we think our children know these words because we may use them occasionally, but they don't. Okay. So look at all the vocabulary that they're gaining just through, just in 13 days of this or 15 days in this unit. And they may not remember every single word. And I certainly do not write all these words down on a word wall or anything like that because we're at home. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I might just say, you know, a couple days later, oh, I'm just meandering down the road or, oh, I feel so dejected now just to remind them about the vocabulary words that they've, they've learned. Okay. Okay. It talks about the writing opportunities and it tells you like how to ask the comprehension questions and what you should expect. Keep going down, keep going down. It has family take-home letters and all this stuff that you don't need to use. So I just wanna show you what you need to do. Okay, it has some trade books. So different versions of the wind in the willows because this is a really big book. Okay, let's keep going. All right, it has these like nonfiction books. So like maybe you add these to your library that week. Okay, it's on page 15, I believe. Here we are, lesson one. So you scroll all the way down there until you get to lesson one. And then they're gonna tell you a little bit more about what kids are going to learn. It tells you the definition of those words. Um, and now here we are introducing the read aloud. So it says, explain to students that you're going to be reading an adaptation of a book called, um, titled The Wind in the Willows. So it's not scripted, but they tell you what to say. Um, and then you tell students that willows are a type of tree. Show students image card one as an example. So that's where 
we go back and those other two, not that one, those other two things we downloaded, that's, this is where we use those. So this is image card one, a willow tree. Then we explain that there are different types of willows. Um, this is called a weeping willow. And I'm getting that information just right from here. Willows like a lot of water and therefore tend to grow near sources of water. Okay, great. Um, we talk about what is fiction. We talk about how this is a really important tale, um, a classic story, just like Charlotte's Web, which we had read. So the kids were like, okay, um, where the wild things are, which we had also read. The Chronicles of Narnia, which we had not read at the time, but this kind of reminded me. So we watched the movie. But this year, we're starting off reading the entire Chronicles of Narnia. Um, okay, so here's the reading part. Scroll down. Okay. <laughs> Scroll down. Here we are. So this is presenting the read along. So find the read aloud. Finally, we get to um, what we're actually going to be um, teaching in terms of the book and what we're actually going to be reading. Um, so here's how I like to do this. I have, oh, you guys can kind of see my TV behind me. Here, let me go back to the screen so I can see you guys and kind of show you. Uh, okay, just ignore that ad. So I homeschool in this room a lot. This is our family room. Um, and so I, like my computer is right here. So I would have this screen up in front of me, right? But then I have this, actually not this, this one. So this is the flip book. And just a reminder, they have this for every subject. So for science, for history, it's very similar. It's not necessarily a flip book like this, but there may be um, a student book. And so let me see if I can mirror. Let's see if I can do this so you guys can see how I do it. On my Mac, I, is it coming up? No. I kind of got to move it over here. There we go. Maybe you can see it now. So on my Mac, I do this and I mirror the, um, hey, I want to go like this. Yeah. So I mirror what's on my screen here up there, or it's actually not a mirror. It's, I don't know, used as a separate display, right? So you can see now the picture, the image of the book that we're reading is behind me. Um, but in front of me, I have, well, I have to move it back over. In front of me, I have the teacher's guide. Okay, so let me just stop doing that right now because it's really confusing. And I'm gonna come back and answer your questions. Oh, my computer's going really slowly. One second. Technical difficulties. I think my laptop wants to die on me right now. So let's plug it back. And then while I do that, I'll ask some questions. The link is, I think I put the link in the description. Okay, yep. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, the link, sorry, in the description, it's called Core Knowledge. And I put the link on buymeacoffee.com. I would really like a grande, probably a hot chocolate. I don't even have that much coffee. But as I go through and do this type of thing, I'm up all night looking at stuff. I know you guys might be up looking at curriculum. And I'm not looking at it to decide. I'm looking at it to try to make uh, videos <laughs> for you guys. Okay, let's see. So, okay, back to presenting the read aloud. I've just showed you how I use this. Um, I use it all electronically. However, I will say you can actually purchase the printed teacher's materials and student materials from Core Knowledge right now. Um, use the website and it may take a couple of weeks because, of course, it's busy season for them. Um, but you can purchase that. I just use it all on my computer slash TV um, or. OK, turn this off. Um, or I will have the kids have that part on their laptop. Okay, so, or not their laptop, their iPad. Let me make sure you guys can see this. Yes, you can. Okay, so it says show image 1A-A, -A, mole cleaning his house. And so that's this. And then 
you read. The mole had been working very hard all morning, spring cleaning his little home. First with brooms, then with dusters, then on ladders, etc. Okay. Um, when you get to a little number like this anywhere, obviously it's here. So whitewash. Kids may not know what whitewash is. I know my kids didn't. Um, I didn't even know what it meant in this context because when we think of whitewashing, we just think of, I don't know, I just thought it was like using hard, like using water to clean. Um, but whitewash is a special solution made of limestone and water used like paint to whiten walls or other things. Okay. So anyway, you'll go on. This read aloud is apparently supposed to take about 20 minutes and you're not going to make it take any shorter than that because it is, you're reading a lot. Um, it tells you in some places, um, so you're going to be showing the image cards in some cases. These are the image cards. And if you forget, it's right there, image cards, right? Because you might want to know what a mole is or a water rat and they haven't seen it before. And then in other places, it will tell you, go to the next image card. Okay, so that's it. I'm not going to go too much through this. I'm going to show you the other subjects now since we've basically gone through everything. So after those 20 minutes are discussing the read aloud for about another 15, 20 minutes. Now this will go faster because you only have a couple of kids. Um, you don't have 30. It says it's highly recommended that students answer at least one question in writing. Um, and I would highly recommend that too, because I saw my kids writing grow a lot by doing this. I wish I could, I actually have a sample of their writing. Hopefully I'll try to pull it up so you can see. Um, you ask them these questions, they answer out loud. Make sure you guys that your kids are answering questions in complete sentences. Um, so what kind of fiction is the wind in the willows? Fantasy is not an appropriate answer. They should say the wind in the willows is a fantasy text or fantasy novel. You don't have to do it every time, um, but try to encourage them to answer in complete sentences. That's going to help their writing and speaking down the line. Um, what elements are found in fantasy? I can't exactly remember if that was taught in this domain or if it was taught in a previous one, but I do remember my kids knowing personifications of animals, objects, magical things. And I know that that's a part of the second grade or first grade tall tales. So if, again, if you get to a part like this and you're like, my kids don't know personification, feel free to go back and teach that. So let's now go back over to... the other and we'll just take a quick look here oh didn't actually mean to do that but that's okay so we'll take a quick look through and you'll see for let's look at their what do you guys want to do science or history and geography let me look at the chat you guys vote what do you want to look through science or history and geography we can also look through the math i haven't looked fully through the math yet Okay, let's see. I'm going to go with history and geography because that's really, let me go with science. Let me go with science. His, no, no, I'm going with history and geography. Okay, so what I wanted to show you about this is that, um, here, let me make sure you can see me properly though. Sorry. Yes, okay. What I love about the history and geography is that people homeschool for different reasons. And you can choose to add or leave out or emphasize or not emphasize certain 10 things. Um, so for me, this was kindergarten. Honestly, it wasn't that important for me, for my kids to learn about the Mount Rushmore presidents. So I did not teach that. Um, but I thought it was really important for them to know that about the Native Americans. So we focused on that unit. There's a history unit, I think it's fourth grade or third grade. Um, yeah, so throughout like third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, they learn about different religions of the world. So if you're a an Islamic homeschooler, you'll love 
unit five here because they, the kids, I'm going to click on it. They learn about um, Northern Africa. And so they learn about Islam and in order to teach up, oh, okay, they want me to enter my thing because I'm not logged in. You could do this. Don't do this though. Like why? You should sign up for the newsletter <laughs> because it really is good. Oops. Don't, don't just enter whatever like I'm doing. I just can't show you guys my personal email address. Um, okay, let me see if I can pick up. So here's fourth grade. And as you can see, it looks just like the other thing, right? Here's the teacher's guide that you're going to look through. These are timeline line cards, which are basically like another flip book. And then it has a student reader. So remember I said that in the social studies slash science slash older level stuff, share this tab instead. Okay. So again, wow, right? You, your child can learn about African kingdoms here and early Islamic civilization. In order to teach about that, they're teaching the kids about uh, the pillars of Islam, Muhammad, right? They need to know all of this stuff to understand chapters four and five. So I understood why they taught that. But personally for me, I don't want to teach my seven-year-old about the pillars, the five pillars of Islam and what you have to do in order to, you know, get to heaven or because she's seven and she's learning about our religion. Um, and also kids aren't going to remember, remember, really remember this. I felt like it wasn't important. Now, maybe if when my kids are in the seventh grade, I think middle school slash early high school is a really good time, in my opinion, for kids to learn um, specifics about different religions. You know, now they can learn, yep, there's a, there's a religion um, called Islam, which we don't practice, but there is this religion. This is what Ramadan is, etc. And my kids personally have had um, their babysitter for many years was a Muslim woman. And so they just, you know, they learn to be tolerant and to understand that other people are different in different ways. So I'm just saying you can skip whatever parts that you want. Um, so we're, I personally would skip all this. And then there's some parts. The second part is about um, ancient African civilization. Okay, so yeah. And they learn about, so I really want my kids to learn about that. Now I've created my own African-American history book, so we might not have to go through this, but we probably will. And so again, even though this is fourth grade level and my kids are, second and third. I can still go through this with them. I can read it to them or have them read it. Um, and yes, there are questions that go along with it, which you'll find. So if, if you're looking for like, um, an activity book that has the questions in it, that's found at the end of the teacher's guide, by the way, oops. Oh, that's what I'm trying to share. So yeah, found at the end of the teacher's guide. Okay, so the history, I feel, is very, very balanced. I feel like they teach about, now if you look at like, let's say if we look at like first grade history, you, you might say like, oh, this is not balanced at all. It's all talking about America. Like if you look at kindergarten, right? Kindergarten, the first unit is we're kind of exploring the world a little bit. Then we talk about Native Americans exploring and moving to America. They talk about how different people got to America in different ways. And I really like how they said that, you know, some people came over as immigrants. Some people came unwillingly. Some people were already here. I feel like the language that they use is really good. Then they talk about Mount Rushmore um, and that's all. So you might say like, well, they're not learning about, you know, different cultures around the world, but keep going because then in first grade, they start to learn about ancient Egypt, different world religions. Um, if you're a Christian or Jewish uh, or whatever, all of those are taught first grade here. So you can, again, pick and choose what you want or teach them all if you want to. Um, then we talk about the Americas in grade one, um, Mexico, et cetera. So, oops. If you ever feel like something is missing, you just probably need to go to a different grade level. Okay. Like, let's look at grade seven, history and geography. Mm, okay. They talk about world history and civics and economics, basically, and then give an overview history of the U.S. But anyway, you can look through these, look through all the grade levels, like I said, and decide what you want to do. Um, science. Let's look through the science. 
I like the science and I'm going to use the science this year. Previously, I've used the science. So here's seventh grade science. I want to look at, let's look at fourth grade science. Actually, I want to look at second grade science because it looks cuter. Previously, I've used the science, but not throughout the whole entire year. This year, my goal is to go through all of the science unit. Um, and like I said, this year, they now have a computer science add-on. So unit six, you do not have to go in order, but you can. And so here's the computer science. It's the same. Here are the questions that they're going to, the questions that they'll learn are smartphones, computers. How do we debug a computer program? Um, what's an algorithm, et cetera. So I think that's very helpful. I have not seen any other curriculum like this yet. If you know of any, please let me know. Um, they have a pacing guides, et cetera. And it's the same thing. Here's the teacher's guide and the student book. Okay. Let's take a look at the student book real quick. All of them look the same. So cute. And again, you can purchase this as a book from their website. All right, here are the different things they're going to learn. And you see it's in, okay, cute. Hannah's mom fixes cars. Today she is fixing a computer in a car. Oh, Hannah asks her mom, is the car computer like the computer I use at school? In a way, yes. Okay, nice. Wow, they're explaining things that I don't even know. So this is awesome. And I'm assuming that they have the, um, the teacher's guide has whatever uh, ac written activities that they should be doing. Here's the teacher's guide. Same process as before. Scroll all the, read about everything that the kids are going to learn. Scroll all the way down. But in looking for the actual activity pages, you have to go all the way to the end of the teacher's guide. Go down, go down. Yep, here they are. So this is the same for reading, science, history, whatever else they have. Scroll all the way down and you'll find the activity pages here that you print out. Okay, let's look at one more thing that I'm going to, oops, look at sharing this tab. Oh, did I not? Oh, I didn't show you this. I'm sorry. Here's the teacher's guide. And you scroll all the way down, all the way down, and you'll see these activity pages. I apologize for that. I did not realize my screen was stuck. Okay, so there you are, activity pages. Again, teacher's guide. This is the teacher's guide, and you just scroll all the way down to the bottom to find the activity pages or the workbook pages. Okay, now let's look at the final thing, which is, okay, so science is the same, um, the other science besides computer science. And what I will say is like, for example, electricity and magnetism. So magnetism, hmm, that's an interesting word. Um, you'll find that there are actually science experiments here too. So you don't have to go and like think about, oh, what experiment should we do? It's right here. And they do list all the materials that you'll need in the teacher's guide. I'll try to look at the student book really fast. Share this tab instead. Here's the student guide or the student book. Okay. All of them are kind of like this. They all kind of follow a little story. Electricity goes out. Oh, what happens? Okay, let's talk about electricity, things that use electricity, etc. cetera. Um, and so in the teacher's guide, you will find the list of, like they'll tell you what experiment that you do even before, before, here's the teacher's guide, before, um, so before lesson one, there's a unit opener. And so you'll, they'll do some experiment here. Okay. And somewhere here, they tell you all the materials that you'll need. Oh, there it is. So like, for example, lesson seven, you need D cell batteries. 
um, insulated copper wire, electric tape. So everything is right here. Isn't that awesome? Uh, let me go back and see if there's any other subject we want to look at. And then I'll show you how to get the scope and sequence. Um, they have some specific, I guess, people who they worked with. So they have random stuff like about Louisiana Bay Bridges here. And they also have a biography series. So apparently in Louisiana, you guys learn about Bay Bridges, uh, Bayou, sorry, I said Bay, Bayou Bridges in the fourth grade and fifth grade too. Okay, random, but cool. Math. We look through language arts. And so the writing in language arts is integrated with the reading. Oh, let me make sure. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Hold on. Oh, I'm not. Let's share it. Window. Okay. This is the screen I'm sharing. Okay. So again, back to here. Again, the writing is integrated with the reading. Um, and it's the same with history and geography and science. Yes, they're learning the science topics and the history and geography topics, but they're also reading and writing about those things, okay? And language arts means reading and writing, you guys. So I'll just click on language arts just so you can see like first grade just for those people interested in um, phonics and stuff. So here's the first grade language arts and wherever it says skills, this is um, like reading skills. So the rest of the skills for first grade are down here. So first grade skills, snapshots and gran. So this is a whole phonics curriculum if you want to go through that, try that. I feel like it's easier just to teach 100 easy lessons um, or use reading.com. But if you want to just take your time and over the, the year teach your child, you can use this. Um, again, this is language arts, but we're also learning about animals and habitats, right? Oh, here's the fairy tales unit that I was talking about before where they learned about characteristics of a fairy tale. Now, let's talk about the math. I have not used the math before, but I glanced through it, and it looked pretty good. And I believe they got all green from edit reports. I'm not sure, though. I'm pretty sure that they would have to. So should we go to just, let's just start with first grade, and we can just, you know, it's just math is all the same in terms of what the kids are learning each year. Um, but if we look at, how it's taught. I think this is good because I like the teacher's guide is very clear. So if you feel like, oh, I'm not really that good at math, don't worry. This teacher's guide, just like um, the other one that I recommend, Eureka Math, um, is very clear for parents. So same thing, teacher's guide and student book. And, oh, this one has some student resources, teacher resources as well. Okay. We'll take a quick look. I have to change the screen so you can see it. Present. This. Okay, so here's an example of their math workbook. Okay, cute and colorful. This really goes slowly so you can look at exactly what they're learning. This is great. Okay, good. So how I used it is I just printed everything out. And as a teacher, we have to, like, <laughs> we had a certain number of copies that you were allowed. And I would always run out of copies because we had to print this thing out. Um, but 
there you go. You could, if we had iPads, we could have used that. Um, so anyway, you can print them out or you can print everything out or you can use your iPad or tablet or you can project it like I did, whatever you want to do. Um, again, the name of the curriculum is Core Knowledge. My kids and I have been using it. I've been using it since they were in, since um, I'll say it was in pre-K because I remember using the pre-K one. You can download it. Yes, they have it for fifth grade as well. Okay, so now I'm going to look at your questions here. There's the links I just put in the chat. I just want to make sure I went through everything. So we went through math a little bit. Yeah, I'll show you the older grades really fast. And then I'll show you the implementation, not the implementation guide, the scope and sequence. Oops. Is it this one? Let's see. I think it's that. Yes. Okay. So let's go like to grade eight. Yeah. So this goes through all subjects, all grades up through eighth. Wow. Eighth grade mathematics, functions and volume, linear equations and linear systems. So I have a lot of trust in core knowledge. So even though I have not reviewed their math program, I bet that if I looked it up, it probably has really good scores. And also keep in mind, you know, it's not always the curriculum because I find a lot of curriculum are similar. Curriculum is very important and it's really important to me, but it has a lot to do with um, how you teach it also. So teaching your curriculum thoroughly, thoroughly is important. Oh, here's the eighth grade science. Wow, this is awesome. Okay, now finally, to find the, so some of you guys need, um, some of you guys need to do, like to give the standards to whatever your umbrella organization is. And so uh, you saw earlier that if you go through the teacher's book. It has all the different standards that the children are working on, but there is some place where it's all on one page and go to, let's just write implementation. I think it's tools and resources, but we're about to find out. Hmm. Kind of. It might be this page. I'm not exactly sure, but it is in that link that I gave you guys. And let's see, I downloaded it earlier. So where is it? Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. Let's just go to the link. Let's just go to the coffee link thing. So if you go to buymeacoffee.com slash Akiba, you'll see this post right here. Oh, I have one supporter. And you can click right here on scope and sequence. And if you open this document, it's right here. Download the document. Looks like this. I guess I should just click on it. And you scroll, scroll, scroll. You'll see they're telling you for every grade, the overview of topics. Now, here's what they learn in language arts, world history, blah, blah, blah. Oh, visual arts. That was moved. Math, music, science. What? I think that this visual arts and music, that has got to be a part of, where is that, you guys? That has got to be a part of the curriculum because I didn't see that. Let's go. Maybe we just found another, another thing that they have. Anyway, as you can see, I tell you right here what, what the kindergartners are learning. So there you go. Okay, so there you go. You have everything. You can give them all this. What? Where is visual arts? They must be talking about through reading because I did not see any download for arts. Did you guys? No. Okay. So art and music, they must have integrated it into the curriculum. Okay. Somewhere. So again, you can go right here. Here's the main website. This is the link that you can use to directly download the curriculum after putting your email address. Again, use your real email address because they send some good stuff. They also have a Facebook, uh, Facebook like group 
So join that. I'm, I'm going to join it as well. And they have a homeschool page they made a couple years ago um, when a lot of parents started homeschooling. So also you can purchase the materials here. See? So like, look at this. You can get the little activity book, only $3. Awesome. If you look and you see that it um, that something costs a lot, you're probably not on the homeschool page. Um, and you're probably looking at like a classroom set. So each of these activity books is only a few dollars. Isn't that amazing? If you want to buy it and not print it out because, I mean, why? Why would you want to? I mean, it probably costs more to print it out than just to buy it. So I think I'm going to buy them. But first, since uh, first I'm, till we move, I'm just going to be using them online. Okay. And then if you enjoyed this video, support by buying me a coffee. Oh, I can't support myself. Leave a comment. Say hello, whether you buy a coffee or not. Um, oh, I have two supporters. Someone bought five coffees. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm going to. And another person bought me a coffee. Oh, my gosh. Thank you guys so much. I'm actually, I'm actually going to go after this and walk to Starbucks and get myself uh, a coffee. Okay. Let's see. And then you can also donate to core knowledge because they are a company. I get the feeling that they, I read through some of their materials and their goal was to provide high qualities, high quality materials to underserved schools. Um, and there you have it. You just saw how awesome that curriculum is. Um, when I used it with my fifth graders, they first of all loved it. We were learning about things that many people may have thought, oh, that's that's boring, like history. But um, the kids really loved it. Um, and it was all free, except for the fact that I had to print it all, print it all out. Um, okay, I'm going to try to go back through and look at some questions. You're welcome. Um, opening the files, you know, the files are pretty big. So you may have to, after you download it, just check to make sure you have enough space on your computer because I found that the files are pretty big. Um, and, and you guys, I will personally, I did this years ago. I would download everything and put it on a little zip drive or SD drive or, or on the Google drive or something like that, because you never know when good free material can all of a sudden become not free. Oh, is my mic working now? Let's see. Can you guys hear me? It says my mic is unplugged. Okay, I'm going to assume that's a yes. Yeah. Maybe I'll just unplug it. Oh, you can't hear me. Okay, well, now I've unplugged it already. Anyway, um... Yeah, I would. I like to download free resources because you never know when they will become unfree. And those are really good. So I downloaded long ago all of the great levels. And luckily, this has stayed free. So uh, thank goodness for that. Okay, let me go through and look. Okay. Do they have an arts? Yeah, I think you probably said that before we look through. I don't think it's actual arts. Um, I think they are integrating it into the curriculum. And the reason why I think they're doing that is because this is used by, again, teachers, especially in underserved communities, really teachers everywhere, um, where we may not have a separate arts, right? They may only get to go to art once every couple of weeks. And we just don't have the time. Like you guys know, as people who homeschool and as educators, there's not enough time in the day to teach all subjects every day. Um, so that's why I think it does a really good job at integrating everything together. Uh, how do you schedule learning time? I work from home and teach when I'm off. Um, it's tough, pre-K to second grade. I like to knock out my learning time first thing in the morning. So my kids wake up, we come in here, let's go, let's start learning, let's knock it out. And if you hold yourself to a certain amount of hours, Two is like if after you've gotten a lot of practice, but let's say you do three hours like at 7 a.m. Um, or two and a half hours at 7 a.m., don't teach after that. 
just stop and go on, wait to the next day. And when I say don't teach, it doesn't mean that they're not learning. So you can still provide learning stuff for them, resources. So not just puzzles, but games that they can play independently. Um, I know a lot of people like online practice for things that you've taught. So that's what I do. But I, I should talk about that more in a another video. Is the pre-K unit good? Yes, the pre-K unit was really good. That's when my kids first learned about or relearned about Barack Obama. And it does not take very long to finish. I'm not sure about in a classroom setting, though, because it is a lot of discussion. And I can imagine little four and five year olds talking a lot. So it's a lot about language and listening and answering in complete sentences and learning new vocabulary. And they have pause point. So everything is broken up into like 15 or 20 minute pieces. Pacing. Yeah, for pacing, like, like I said last year, I, I do, it was not the best at pacing because I let things go on for too long. This year, I'm going to be more strict with myself in terms of pacing so we can get through the entire curriculum. Because if I were teaching, I would most likely get through 75% of the curriculum. So since I'm home, I'm going to aim to get through 100% of the curriculum. And again, pacing, I think the best thing that you can do is set yourself a timer. Because that way you can start to you know, catch up. Right. So let's say my first year of teaching math lessons would always go over so long. And I'd be like, how are you supposed to teach that in 45 minutes? But once I started saying like, no, actually, what I didn't even say it. It was after math class. We had lunch, but our schedule changed. And so I could not be late to lunch because then the kids wouldn't eat. They would complain. Obviously, I would complain. I wanted my lunch break. So once math started, I had to finish in 45 minutes. So I just finished, right? And I, I mean, not finished, I ended after 45 minutes. And if I wasn't finished, we had to continue the lesson the next day or after lunch, whatever. And then I found over time, once I became, I knew the curriculum better, I could teach it faster, right? Some things that take time are transition. So calling your kids over, Come on, it's time now. Okay, they want to ask you about like random stuff. When are we going to eat? Are we having macaroni today? Can we take a walk after this? All those little things eat away at your time um, in a classroom setting and in a home setting. And so those are important to get rid of for your pacing. You really have to be really strict with your time, especially in the beginning, so that you can get everything done. And when you do that, okay, then it only takes us two and a half hours to homeschool. But if you don't, then it can go into five hours, like you're spending the whole entire day homeschooling. So that's what I do with my pacing. And in terms of, you know, pacing, pacing of the lessons, again, just looking at your watch and making sure, okay, this part says 20 minutes. Why is it taking us 45? Most likely it's going to be because you're talking a lot and you can decide for yourself. Is that something that I want us to do? Do I want us to have a deep discussion about this book and take two months to teach something that was supposed to take two weeks? Well, maybe, or maybe I will let it go on for three weeks, right? So you have to decide for yourself, like how long do you want to spend on this? And you can always finish the lesson and then like, discuss or whatever, or go off of to any different tangents. Um, okay, the link is there. I've been doing it since I taught and then I started using it with my children um, pre and pre-K. Not all of the subjects. And actually when I started using the pre-K, they didn't even have the math out. Um, so I started, I've been using it for a while. So now she's in second pre-K, K one, going into second. So three years, three years I've been using with my kids and then previously um, with my students one year. And they're also always updating. So I think like I, I saw a mistake that they had corrected and they just said, oh, hey, here's the mistake. So you may want to every year go back and just download the new books because they could have made some updates and corrections. Can you explain to us what's free? Oh, teacher and student books are all free. Everything on there is free. The only thing that's paid is if you want to 
um, have a physical book shipped to you, which again, we saw that it was like $3 for the student book. So I'm going to do that. Um, so let's say if it's like $3 for the student book and there were what, 13 units in the language arts. So that would be like $39 for the student books. I personally, I don't think I'm going to get the teacher's manual just because now I'm so used to looking at the teacher's manual on my computer. Other curriculums where the teacher's manual on the computer is not good, but this one, it's just a PDF. So it's really simple. And yes, I recommend this for teachers and homeschoolers. You guys know that a lot of teachers, I don't know if this is still the case, you guys can tell me, but um, at least a couple years ago, you wouldn't get a curriculum for everything. Like we would particularly start the year with no science curriculum. And actually I don't remember, let me think. No, no school that I where I taught had a, science curriculum, like a full science curriculum. Now, what my academic coaches would do is they would go look in some people's classrooms and pull out, oh yeah, here's this science box from whatever. And then we would have like a science kit and like different pieces of science curriculum, but we didn't have a full science curriculum. And that was the case for in a, a few places. The only thing that like you would know that they may have maybe would be a reading curriculum. And that's only recently where, you know, in the past like 10 years where it's been like, okay, we need to really be serious about reading. So I would know that we would have a reading curriculum. We may not start with the math curriculum or science curriculum. And so that's where this type of thing I think comes in handy. So it's like here, everything that you could need right here. Okay. I'm going down. Okay, see if there are any more questions. Oh, wow, your daughter graduated from law school. Oh, that is really, really good. Okay, I'm just reading. Do you have suggestions that can help catch up fast? Oh, and fast track for math? Hmm, it depends on your budget to fast track for math. And it depends on the child's gaps. I say a lot of children, not just children, but adults who either don't like math or have gaps in math um, or who struggle with math, it's all traced to early, early math. So like pre-K, K, one and two. And I know we hate to hear that, but it really is like going back to that basic number sense. So if you want to fast track a child in math, I would heavily focus on number sense. What's the meaning of numbers just in general? Um, and then once they get that, you know, once they can do mental math, then everything becomes a lot easier. I'm trying to think about like my fifth graders and third graders who we were able to grow a lot. Honestly, the thing that helped was practicing every single day. So whatever curriculum, so I'm not sure how far the, the child or the person is, but let's say they're in fifth grade and they're doing math on a first or second grade level or even third grade level. Go back to a first grade level, choose again, whatever curriculum that you would like and just work with them every single day. Stay consistent, stay consistent every single day, right? Almost 365 days of the year and they're going to improve especially with one-on-one -on -one or really small group attention. It's just that we're not really able to give that in schools. So um, what are your, okay, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm sorry if I skipped some comments. Older cohort, yes, that's coming. I actually have, uh, I'm making a little, Just I just wanna provide you all with all the information. Um, on a PDF slash website about the reading groups for older children. So I'm going to have a reading group for parents of littles, so pre-K and under, who are interested in making sure their kids have a strong start. We're not gonna be teaching them how to read at two or three, you can, that's just not my focus, but doing things like pre-reading skills. So we'll have one group doing that. And then we'll have another group of three and a half to four-year-olds 
who are ready to learn to read, um, and then four and a half to six who are ready to learn to read. And I just broke them up because we've noticed that with the little littles, like three and a half year olds learning to read, some of them it's going to be slower and that's okay. Um, but with the four and a half year olds, or by the time you're five, you can learn to read faster than when you are three and a half. And then we're going to have ages, a group for ages six and up who are either struggling or who, if you just want your kids to have more phonics instructions and spelling instruction, if they're six, seven, eight, nine, up all the way until 10, not going older than 10 because that's going to require some different type of intervention. Then we're going to have a group which is like advanced reading. And like I said in the beginning of this video, we are starting by reading the Chronicles of Narnia unabridged. All the books, I think there's eight. We're starting now. I think it's like 48 hours of Audible. And so that's how I measure how fast it's going to take me to read aloud. I think it's a, did it say 48? No, it definitely said more than 48 hours to read the whole whole thing. Um, but anyway, I think I'm giving myself 70 days um, to read the whole thing. And so anyway, the advanced readers group will be going through some advanced books with their children. And also, I don't know why I'm saying this now because you'll find out about it later, but your child can be in like be working on phonics and reading um, and spelling and still read with you advanced books. So don't feel like, oh, my child like has doesn't like messes up some words or changes B to D so we can't join. No, anyone, if you feel like your child can keep up in the advanced group can join. So please do. Okay, let's see. I'm looking for suggestions for children who are not interested in learning to read, but are very bright. It depends, LaShawn, how old is the child? Because if they're a if they're a little child, like two and three, I would just ignore it. <laughs> like just keep reading to yourself, keep a literacy rich environment and that's okay. Now, if they're like six, then I would do the same thing, but also start adding in some motivation. So the question was, what are your suggestions for um, kids, children who are not interested in learning to read, but are very bright? Do you still use Envision? Any other recommendations? I do use Envision, but I'm not going to be using it this year, this upcoming year. I'm going to be sticking with Beast Academy. Um, I really like Envision. It's so fun, um, but I can't do two curriculums at one time is what I learned. And so what I'll be doing is during the summer, I'm going to be using Envision. Envision, I think, is better to prepare children, like if you have children who are going to be going in, back into school at some point um, or who are going to be taking standardized tests, Envision has a lot of practice for that built in. And so that's why I like it and I'm not going to, I'm not going to ever stop using it. I'm gonna use it in my summers and on my breaks. Um, Beast Academy though will make your, child really, really know math. Um, it's just that if a child just does Beast Academy, they're not prepared for testing. And I don't have any plans on not homeschooling my children through high school, but I don't know what might happen. They may, they may need to take some sort of test at some point and I want them to be prepared. So that's why I still use Envision. Other recommendations for math, I use Great Minds, which is free. I just dropped the link there. Um, and honestly, that's one of the best curriculum. The only problem with that curriculum is just that it's not, you, you don't have it physically in your hands to look through. And I feel like it makes it a little bit unusable. But if you are a teacher or a parent and you feel like just taking two or three days out of your life to print out the material for these online curriculum like Great Minds, they end up being very good. So our my math coach, when I was using 
great minds, Eureka Math are the same thing. Um, when we were using it, she, in the beginning of the year, just printed out everything for us. So it was just like having a workbook. How to spell distar alphabet. Um, I believe children reading before kindergarten. How to spell the distar alphabet. I'm not exactly sure what you mean on that. Do you mean like the different... Distar is just kind of like a... Can you clarify? You'll have to clarify your question. Um, phonics to reading or 100 ways to teach a child to read entering third grade at a kindergarten level. Let's see. Okay. Oh, someone asked, do they have this in Spanish? Yes. Yes, they do. They have a Spanish version. I'm just going to look on core knowledge. I don't think they have a Spanish version for every, okay, yeah. Just click language Spanish here. Oh, okay. Here, I'm gonna show you guys, present, share screen. I think this is what I'm trying to show you. All right, here, yeah, I just clicked Spanish down here as a filter. And you can see what books they also have in Spanish. It's not all of them, but they have some history and geography. They also have some other languages that came up. They have like, um, is Ukraine a language? Because I'm pretty sure I saw something that said like Ukraine or Ukrainian, something like that around here. So let me stop sharing this. So look through, they have a few different languages. Um, Oh, I don't know how the I I've only seen it spelled distar, not spread apart. Um, okay, I'm gonna answer some of these questions later because I have to jump off of here. Logic of English, I have not heard of that or been able to review that yet. With a five-year-old learning to read, you should start. You should follow me on Instagram so that <laughs> you follow me on Instagram. I'm about to go over from beginning to end. Uh, do you like hooked on phonics? You know, I, I hope so. I haven't been able, I haven't been able to check out hooked on phonics. They've reached out to me a couple of times, but I've said like, okay, let me check out. They've said, can you like promote this to your audience? And I said, yes, give me the information so I can check it out first. And then they both times they have not given it to me first. So I don't want to promote anything without being able to fully take my time and look through it. Um, so, yeah, and I know that they have an app. So, oh, good. It's really good. Well, then I'm going to reach back out to them. Maybe I'll email them tonight after we get off of here and say, hey, like, we would love to check out your program. Um, so send it to me so I can look at it. I think sometimes companies get scared that you're going to, like, say bad stuff about them. But I just would just say, never mind, I'm not going to work with you if I feel like it were, were bad. So we'll see. Okay, maybe I'll send them this so they can know that people are asking about it. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Thank you for everyone who's on here, whether you're talking or not. Thank you for talking if you are. Thank you for watching if you're watching. Thank you for sending me a coffee if you sent me a coffee. If you haven't sent me a coffee yet, please do send me a coffee. Here's the link again. And I'm actually about to go <laughs> right now to Starbucks since a couple of you sent me a coffee. It's five o'clock here. Watch the next video. We have a big announcement. If you follow me on Instagram, maybe you already know. But anyway, watch the next video. It's going to be a good one. It won't be live. It's pre-recorded. Have a good night, you guys.